Welcome to Learn Medical Spanish. Today I'm going to go over a dialogue you could use before, during, and after an incision and drainage procedure. So if you're doing that with your Spanish-speaking patients, here's some stuff you might want to say. All right, so as usual, I'm going to go over the phrases in English first and give you about enough time to think about the translation, if you can kind of try to piece it together on your own. And then I'll say it in Spanish a couple of times, and ideally repeat it out loud each time that I say it, because it's a really good chance to practice talking out loud, because that's the hardest part of learning a language, is talking out loud. All right, so here's the first phrase. You have a bacterial infection in the skin. Usted tiene una infección bacterial en la piel. Usted tiene una infección bacterial en la piel. It's called an abscess. Se llama un absceso. Se llama un absceso. So you taught them the word abscess, and now we're going to use it uh, again in some of the other phrases. All right, next one is, I need to drain the pus so it can heal more quickly. And this will sound more like I need to take out the pus. Necesito sacarle el pus para que pueda sanarse más rápido. Necesito sacarle el pus para que pueda sanarse más rápido. Quick grammar note, we're using subjunctive a few times in this dialogue, and this is one example. When you say para que, um, para que pueda, um, that's an example of a phrase where you'd want to use subjunctive. All right, so the next phrase is, first I'll inject anesthetic to decrease the pain. Primero voy a inyectar anestesia para disminuir el dolor. Primero voy a inyectar anestesia para disminuir el dolor. You'll feel pressure and a bit of burning sensation. Va a sentir presión y un poquito de ardor. Va a sentir presión y un poquito de ardor. I'll open the abscess with a small cut, one centimeter. Voy a abrir el absceso con un pequeño corte, un centímetro. Voy a abrir el absceso con un pequeño corte, un centímetro. Or you could say less than a centimeter. Menos de un centímetro, or about a centimeter, más o menos un centímetro. Um, some flexibility there, of course. Next phrase. You may feel some pain, but hopefully not much. Tal vez vaya a sentir un poco de dolor, pero espero que no mucho. Tal vez vaya a sentir un poco de dolor, pero espero que no mucho. That's another example of subjunctive. Tal vez vaya. 
since it's kind of a maybe we don't know kind of thing. Um, though you could use just the regular present tense and it wouldn't be a big deal. All right, so now we're kind of segueing to after uh, the procedure. And so here's the next phrase. We'll cover it with a bandage. Lo vamos a cubrir con un bendaje. Lo vamos a cubrir con un bendaje. Take the antibiotics as instructed. Tome los antibióticos según las instrucciones. Tome los antibióticos según las instrucciones. The wound should heal gradually. La herida debe sanarse poco a poco. La herida debe sanarse poco a poco. And I'm going to call an audible and add another phrase here. Let's say um, you can wash it with soap and water. Puede lavarla con agua y jabón. Puede lavarla con agua y jabón. So as I was saying that, I realized you could also use a reflexive form of the verb because um, lavar is sometimes used that way. So you could say lavarse, lavársela. Puede lavársela con agua y jabón. So that's saying wash yourself the wound, lavársela. So that's the, like a reflexive form. But they should understand either way if you use the, the first way that I said that. Next phrase. Return here if you have any worsening or other concerns. Regrese aquí si se empeora o le preocupa algo. Regrese aquí si se empeora o le preocupa algo. So that covers at least the high points of what you'd want to say to a patient before, during, and after an IND procedure. Um, obviously, there's other things you could add, so but maybe this is a good starting point just to kind of learn this much, and then you can kind of add in a couple other phrases that you find useful. If you want to go over some other medical Spanish dialogues similar to this one, if you're on YouTube, here's a playlist that has a lot of those. Other things you might want to talk to your Spanish-speaking patients about, like their pain, etc. And then here's a really high-yield beginner Spanish playlist that goes over very common vocabulary that you should know as a beginner, as well as things like pronunciation and other just really beginner-friendly topics. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.